All right, so let's start from the beginning. This is a very first step is to open your access practice database. And you want to make sure that you enable the content. And the very first requirement is for us to create the relationships in um, your between your tables. Uh, inventory sales and sales items at the very least. Well, let's go ahead and create all of them right away. So I'm going to go to database tools, um, relationships. Then I'm going to grab all the tables, add them into my design. Notice that this employee table does not have an employee ID. So I'm going to design the employee table by right clicking on the menu, switching this to a primary key. So I want to make sure that that is the case. All of the rest of my data elements are properly uh, set. Let me close this employee table now. Uh, another thing I want to do immediately is the sales item has to be uh, changed to a currency format. That is the unit price for my sales item table. I'm going to save it and close it um, and close this as well. Everything else looks proper. A customer order. Oh, zip code for um, customers is incorrect. So let's go ahead and go to table design for that table and change it to short text. And then my credit limit should be a currency as well. So let me save it. It looks correct. So let me close the customers table now. Now that I have all the tables here lined up, I'm going to organize them by uh, our e. REA concepts, which is resources. My resource is my inventory. My economic event is my sale. And then my stock flow or the association class between inventory and sales is represented in the sales items table. So to create a relationship, I'm going to click on inventory ID. I'm going to click on that field, drag it into the inventory ID uh, field for the sales items table. And I just make sure that both of these are the same inventory ID or inventory. And they don't have to be the same name as long as you understand that these two things, these two fields are linking them together. I'm enforcing referential integrity at this point, and that's great. Um, once I enforce that, I can grab, I can do the same with everything else. Invoice ID to invoice ID, enforce referential integrity. Uh, employee ID is related to sales by the employee ID table. Notice that I made a mistake here. So let me switch that to employee ID, enforcing referential integrity. Uh, let's just say that I had chosen company name into customer ID. If I try to enforce referential integrity, it's going to tell me that it was not found. So because of that, now that I know that the customer ID is linked with the table customer ID, uh, I'm sorry, that customers and sales are linked together via the customer ID field on each one of those tables then I can enforce the referential integrity. And let's do this. And I can save this, close it, and I am absolutely done. And so that's the end of the first requirement.